you know, I'm kind of in the mood to cause mischief right now. So, I curse you to only be able to, uh, only be able to code like, um, old Shakespearean English. <laughs> Guess you can't make a video now, can you? This is why you don't mess with Master Junior Troopa. The Shakespeare programming language was created by Carl Weiberg and John Osland. Wait a second. That actually exists? Shoot. Programs in the Shakespeare programming language are structured like Shakespeare plays. They start with a title which does... NOTHING! What follows the title is a list of characters and descriptions about them. Each character acts as a variable that can hold an integer. Some versions of this programming language, like the original one, also allow characters to be used as a stack. But the one I'm using doesn't have that ability because, and I quote, WHO NEEDS DATA STRUCTURES IN SHAKESPEARE? REALLY? The characters must be actual Shakespearean characters, so you can't write any Shakespeare-style plays about Batman in this programming language. Yeah, sorry about that. After the characters are all declared, we move on to the first act. Like actual Shakespeare plays, programs in Shakespeare are divided up into acts and scenes, and they are numbered with Roman numerals. To have characters enter and exit the stage, you use stage directions. You can have multiple people enter at the same time by listing both their names and putting and between them. Hey, thanks for telling me how basic grammar works. You're welcome. To have all characters exit the stage, you use exuant... Exit? Ex... Uh, uh. It's pronounced exuant, you moron! Inside of scenes, characters have dialogue, which act as commands. To run a command, you have one character talk to the other using you or thou. Because of this, only two characters can exist on the stage at one time, since computers aren't able to deal with stories that are too complicated. Assigning a character's value starts with the phrase, you are. You can also add, as insert adjective here as, but that only serves as decoration. Next, you say what the character should be set to. Any noun with a positive or neutral connotation is a constant of one, and any noun with a negative connotation is a constant of a negative one. Um, can you please tell me what you mean by positive nouns, neutral nouns, or negative nouns? It looks like you're trying to give connotations to nouns. Positive nouns are nice things like flower, hue, and pony. Negative nouns are bad things like hell, pig, and starvation. Neutral nouns are things like tray, lantern, and stone wall. Makes sense, right? Also, there are lists of nouns. If you use a noun that isn't on the list, your program won't work. So, you are a hero assigns the other person on stage's value to positive one, and you are a pig sets the other person on stage's value to negative one. But how do we set things to numbers that aren't a type of one? Attaching adjectives to nouns multiplies their value by two. So if Romeo says, you are a little horse to Juliet, Juliet's value will be two. If Juliet tells Romeo, thou art a pretty golden flower, Romeo will be given the value of four. Negative adjectives, like dirty, rotten, fat kidneyed, also exist. But they act just like regular adjectives. Also, like nouns, you're limited to just a few adjectives from a list. GO AWAY, CLIP IT! Now you might notice that this only gets you to powers of 2, so you'll need to do, at the very least, addition and subtraction. Math operations can be done by saying, you are the sum of, you are the product of, you are the quotient of, or you are the difference between. Followed by the two values. If Romeo tells Juliet, you are as pretty as the sum of a big lovely rose in a kingdom, Juliet will be the sum of 4 and 1, or 5. If Romeo then tells Juliet, open your heart, Juliet will output her numerical value to the console. Similarly, if one character tells another, speak your mind, the character being spoken to will output their value as an ASCII character. So if one character tells another, you are the difference between yourself and an infected, fat, stupid, cowardly, fatherless, dirty blister, you are the sum of yourself in a tree, speak your mind, the character being spoken to would output an A. Hey! Why am I in this? I'm not a Shakespeare character! I know, I just thought it would be funny to see Juliet insult you. Replace you with someone like Julia Caesar, and the program would actually be accepted by the translator. You thought me getting insulted was FUNNY?! Why are you so mean? I have feelings too, you know. <laughs> That's it. Unless you can use that to write the word Shakespeare, which due to how long and complex that horrible insult was might take some time, then buy my channel! <laughs> I will have my revenge! And you'll have this white box. So, program that outputs the programming language's name. While that sounds like it should be quick and easy, this programming language makes outputting characters take forever. Let me help! Shut up, Clibbit. This program starts with a title. Next, we create two characters, Macbeth and Julius Caesar. The first and only act begins, as well as the first and only scene. Like all the other esoteric programming languages that output characters with letter at a time and make it really time consuming to change those letters, we just add to subtract numbers from variables, or characters, until they reach their target value, and then tell them to output their values, or speak their minds. The first line for Macbeth sets Caesar to negative 64, and then it subtracts 16, 2, and 1, which would eventually leave us with negative 83. Yes, negative numbers, because those certainly have ASCII characters associated with them. And then we multiply by negative one. Oh, okay. Carry on then. Anyway, this is basically how all the letters are outputted in this program. And the program language as a whole for that matter. This program also tells the story of Macbeth and Caesar having an insult contest. 
Yeah, yeah, whatever. Run your program and let me see it fail. Shoot! Uh, calculator! Yeah, I love making your life miserable, so give me a Shakespearean calculator! By the way, the Shakespeare programming language is usually translated into C and not directly interpreted. So in this video, it will be called a translator, not an interpreter. Because it's not an interpreter. The calculator has five characters. Paris, Romeo, Fanquo, Fire Lords, and Juliet. It also only has one act. I actually never use more than one act in this entire video. Scene 1 starts with Paris and Juliet. Juliet says, listen to your heart, which takes an input as a number and stores that number into the character being spoken to. After Paris leaves, Romeo enters, and Juliet tells him, open your mind. Open your mind, as you may have guessed, inputs an ASCII character and stores its ASCII value into the Shakespeare character being spoken to. Lastly, Fake Poe comes on stage and gets his value set, and due to a bug in the translator, I need to do it twice. As you probably guessed by this order of commands, input is taken in as number, operator, number. Scene 2 is where, based on the ASCII value Romeo is set to, it jumps to a different scene. Romeo, as you may have guessed, is the operator of the math problem. First, Juliet is set to the value of 42, the ASCII value for the asterisk. Juliet then asks, am I as good as you? This checks if the two characters on stage are equal, and if they are, it proceeds to the scene described in the next sentence. Scene 3 is run if the operator is an asterisk. Scene 4 is run if the operator is a plus. Scene 5 is run if the operator is a minus. And Scene 6 is run if the operator is a slash. In Scene 3, Fire Lords is set to the product of Paris and Banquo. That just gave me an unsettling mental image. And then he is told to open his heart. Lastly, we proceed to the end, which is Scene 7. The next three scenes perform different operations, but are otherwise the same. Oh, and Scene 7 is empty and serves as a jump point. You know, just like in real Shakespeare plays. Hey, when I put this in my translator, it didn't work. Why did you lie to me like this? Oh, the jumping to scene titles thing only works in this translator that was written in Python. Other translators require you to type the phrase, let us proceed to scene, and then the scene's number. You know, because that is what you would expect a character in a play to say. <laughs> I bet that calculator can't even calculate 32 plus 16. Uh, 12 minus 3? Four times eighteen? Shoot! Seventy-two divided by four! Darn it! Now the ninety-nine bottles of beer! I know you'll fail that one! Yeah, you don't mess with Master Junior Trofa! That shouldn't be too difficult, just time-consuming. The first, Colin Creature presents a new segment that may or may not come back again. This programming language comes with many adjectives and nouns that you can use to assign values to characters. In theory, you can make a program that not just functions, but is also fun to act out. The problem comes when you realize that all the nouns, with the exception of negative ones, are all treated the same! And all the adjectives are treated the same as well! That means that the poetic phrase, You are a pretty beautiful golden young lady, means the exact same thing to the translator as... You are a big, 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 big cat. So if you're lazy, you can just call the other character a cat over and over again. Or the summer difference of cats. So in theory, your programs are supposed to look like the characters are actually doing something. But in practice, well, one character is just calling the other character a cat of various bignesses with the occasional speak your mind thrown in. Or you could be less lazy and actually make your program sound like a play. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming! Creature, that was a lame pun. Sorry. What are you guys doing? This is an esoteric programming language. It's not supposed to be made practical in any way. This 99 Bottles of Beer program contains five characters. Macbeth, Juliet, Banquo, Hamlet, and Duncan. In scene one, the characters get their values set. Hamlet and Macbeth enter, and Hamlet sets Macbeth's value to 99 by adding 64, 32, and 4, and then subtracting 1. Next, Macbeth leaves and Juliet enters. Juliet will store the value of the space, and since its ASCII value is 32, which is a power of 2, it requires no addition or subtraction. Next, Juliet leaves and Banquo enters. Banquo's value is set to 10, the ASCII value for a new line. This is done by adding 8 and adding 2. In the next scene, everyone leaves, and Duncan and Macbeth enter. Duncan then tells Macbeth to open his heart, which outputs his value as a number. Next, Juliet enters, and Duncan tells her to speak her mind, which is a space. What follows is a lot of comparisons to cats. Around this point, I got lazy and started pretty much only using cat as my noun, and only big as my adjective. Each word of the song is a giant block of text being spoken by Juliet, repeatedly comparing Duncan to cats, and telling him to speak his mind. After printing each word of the song, Duncan just tells Juliet to speak her mind, and Juliet starts printing the next word. After each line of the song is completed, to help with the new line, Duncan leaves, Banquo enters, and Juliet tells him to speak his mind. 
When outputting the first, second, and fifth lines in the song, Macbeth comes up to output the number again. When outputting the third and fourth lines, Duncan just comes back up to continue outputting text. Also, on the fifth line of the song, Juliet lowers Macbeth's value by one, decreasing the amount of beer. Lastly, in scene three, Macbeth compares himself to Hamlet. Remember, Hamlet never got a value set, so his value is still zero. To check if a value is greater than another, you use the phrase, am I better than you? If the character saying that has a higher value than the other character, the following scene is jumped to when the cycle repeats. And in case you are wondering how long this program is, it is 222 lines! I actually didn't intend for it to be a palindrome, that just kinda happened. Also, I allowed one bottle of beer to slide. And if I didn't, it would have taken slightly longer to write this program and it would have probably been a few lines longer. Bye bye, channel! Hey, you allowed one bottle of beer two times in the past. Why do you care about it now? You never announced that you were changing the rules. Um, uh, what? No, not again! This isn't the last you've seen of Junior Trooper! I'll be back! If you want to use the Shakespeare programming language yourself, a link to the translator as well as my programs are in the description. By the way, if you wanted to see a video of the characters axing out the text outputting and calculator programs, a video of that should be out soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you whenever I make another video.